Rafiq Abu Khalil serves in a part of the world that is often front page news because of political and religious unrest. He works directly with social media as well as print and satellite broadcast reaching the Arab world. He also organizes the follow-up ministry connecting people who call in with questions about Christianity with those trained in discipleship. His stories will challenge us toward deeper commitment to Christ as he shares how God is at work in the midst of opportunity and the threat of danger. Please give a warm Black Rock welcome to our global partner, Rafiq Abu Khalil. My name is Rafiq Abu Khalil. I was born and grew up in the Middle East in a Christian home. I got to know the Lord at the age of 13. I went to college, graduated. I got a job in a secular production com uh, company. I was doing a lot of TV commercials. And one day, my boss said, I'm going to give you something different to do. He brought me a client from Bahrain to help his project. And his project is he chanted the book of the Quran by his voice. And he wants me to make this audio file clean and crisp. And then he said, can you do this? I said, I can. But let me ask you one question before you go. Why do you want to do this? He said, because I'm going to put this audio file on DVD, and I'm going to print hundreds and thousands of this DVD. We're going to give it away to the Christians, the infidels in Europe and North America, so they can leave Christianity and follow Islam. That is what I want to do. I looked at him and I say, wow, you have really a big mission to do. He said, all of them, they're going to follow the faith of Muhammad. He shook my hand and left. After that, I was in a dark studio with two big screens and computers, and I felt that I really want to pray about this project. Shall I take it or not? I didn't feel comfortable to take this project on. So as I start to pray, I said, Lord, I don't want to do it. I felt the Lord is asking me, Rafiq, what do you want to do? And I told the Lord, I would love for this sheikh to know the gospel and all the Arab Muslims in North Africa and the Middle East to know you. Right after that, I felt really convinced that I should resign. And then I devoted my time after that to use media to reach out to the Muslim people in the Arab world. This is a story of so many stories that you have. Everyone in this room has a story to know, to, to tell. And every story has a beginning and has an end. I have to confess with something I do wrong, really. Every time I read a book, I go through the introduction. If I like the introduction, I go to the last chapter of the book, straight, to read the end of the story. And if I like the end, I go back to the beginning and start to read in order. It is crazy, I know that, and it's driving my wife crazy, she knows that, and, but I can't help with it. Well, if you go to the Bible, the Bible has a great story to tell. It is the global story. It is God's story. If you want to know the end of that story, let's go to the last book in the Bible, Revelation 7, 9, and 11. It says, a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They fell down on their faces before the throne, and they did one thing. They worshipped God. Brothers and sisters, this is the end of God's story. 
to bring people from all over the world. One day, you and I and so many people will be together to worship our Lord. What a great end of God's story. In order to reach the two billion people, some of these two billion people, there are about 410 million, they live in the Arab world, and that is North Africa and the Middle East, 21 Arab countries. 90% of the population there are Arab Muslims, and they're considered unreached people group. Today, I just want to say a big thank you to Black Rock Church. Through your faithful prayer over the years and your financial giving over the years, it enabled us to build God's kingdom in that part of the world. I would love to share with you some stories that bring the glory to the Lord and to encourage you to pray more and give more. We use social media in a very big way. We create our mobile applications to evangelize people and to disciple them. And this is what happened. Muhammad from Darfur in Sudan. He found that the ex-president, Omar al-Bashir, is a Muslim leader, a member in the Muslim Brotherhood. It is very kind of strong Muslim group that all what they want to control the whole world and apply the Sharia law or the Islamic law. They want to control every nation in the whole world. That Muslim leader sent Muslim troops to go to Darfur to kill Muslim citizens. Muhammad said, it doesn't make sense. Why in the world Muslim leader, Muslim troops, kill Muslim citizens? They're all Muslims and they all follow Muhammad and they're all, they belong to the Islamic faith. What is going on? While he's in Darfur, he met a foreigner, Mr. John. He went to Mr. John and told him, John, why you are the only non-Muslim person in my community here? Why you are helping me? Why you are helping the Darfuri people in the state here? He told him, I'm Christian and I follow the teaching of Christ. Christ taught me to love people and to care for them. This is why I'd like to help the people around me. That answer, collecting his mind, it became very difficult for Muhammad and his wife and his children to remain in Darfur. He's looking for a safer place to live in. They decided to leave Sudan and migrate to Egypt. Once he arrived to Egypt, he got access to the internet and he started to search about the teaching of Christ, the love of Christ. He found our website, he started to read a lot, and it seemed that it did something in his heart. He found our phone number, he called us, and he started to say, I have so many questions, I want to meet someone face to face and listen to answers for these questions. We sent him one of my colleagues. He spent four hours in a coffee shop with Muhammad, listening to his story and the questions. Then my colleague said to Muhammad, I cannot answer all these questions today. Why you don't come to our Bible group every Tuesday at night and you yourself will find the answer for all these questions and you will get to know the truth. All people in the Bible group, they're from the same background like you and they have the same struggles like you. 
he decided to come to the Bible group. Muhammad, after five weeks, he said, wow, I came to the conclusion that Jesus is Lord. He died on the cross to save me. What can I do to follow him and become a Christian? On On that day, he gave his life to the Lord. We told him, Muhammad, what would you like to do now? He said, I would love for my wife and children to know the Lord as I got to know him. The whole Bible group started to pray for Muhammad and his family. Well, Muhammad went back home, and for the following couple of weeks, all what he was doing to watch on the TV Christian programs and to read the Arabic Bible. That drove his wife crazy. His wife is coming from a very militant background. Everybody in her family is kind of strict Muslim. She didn't like what she's seen. Muhammad stopped performing prayer in Islam like five times a day, and he's not reading the Quran anymore. And instead, he became Christian and reading the Bible. She said, Muhammad, would you please stop watching that TV and stop reading the Bible? He didn't listen to her. Day after day, she started to feed him. He didn't listen to her. Then she picked up the phone and she said, Muhammad, since you don't listen to me, I'm going to call now your family, my family, and they're going to go after you to kill you because you left Islam. Muhammad, the Lord gave him wisdom to handle that situation. Muhammad said, Hen, that's his wife, this Bible taught me to marry only one wife, not four, as it happened in Islam. This Bible taught me, if you disobey me for whatever reason, I should not bring the wooden stick and beat you because of your disobedience to me as a husband, as it happening in other faith. This Bible taught me, it doesn't matter what you do, I will remain faithful and keep loving you as you are. Hen looked at her husband, Muhammad, and she said, Muhammad, keep reading the Bible. <laughs> it was amazing to see the response of Hen, her husband, uh, yeah, her wife, oh, sorry, his wife. Do you understand me? I, I'm not like Steve or Kerry or these people who speak English really, really well. I'm not this kind of people, you know? And I wish one day I would be fluent in English like you guys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, we start to do events to reach out to the refugees in the country. Muhammad brought his wife, Hind, and she met with one of our female leaders in the group. She told her, ma'am, can I speak with you in private for a few minutes? I want to share with you a secret that nobody knows, even my husband. What is it? She said, in the last couple of weeks, I've been seeing this dream happen to me so many times that someone come in white robes, holding a cross and saying, Hand, you are on the right path. Please follow me. She said, I don't know what does it mean. Is that Jesus kind of inviting me to follow him and become Christian? She said, yeah, this is exactly what the dream is saying. So you need to listen. She said, but I don't know anything about Christianity. I'm a faithful Muslim. I grew up in a Muslim family. I know Islam very well, but this is really difficult for me to change my faith from one to the other 
without knowing anything about Jesus, she invited her to come to the Bible group every Tuesday with, to join her husband. Then she decided to do that. But she said to our uh, female leader, I'm going to make a sign. If next week I kept dreaming the same dream three times in one week, this is a confirmation that Jesus is inviting me to, to follow him and become Christian. So they waited for the following week, and believe me, every single day, she dreamed the same dream. So she decided immediately to join the Bible group, and she studied the Bible with her husband and other people. A couple of months later, she said, wow, I can see when Jesus interviewed or met with all these women in the Bible, he just spoke to them in a very loving and caring way. He helped them, he never condemned any of them, but he offered them the salvation. What can I do to follow Jesus and become a Christian? On that day, she received Jesus as a savior. We praise the Lord for that. <laughs> Muhammad and his wife, they decided to move from their current house to the other, another bigger house. And the reason they want to do that, because they want to plant a church in their home. So they invited people, they start to share the gospel. Some people came to the Lord and they start to worship together as a bigger group. This man and his wife, last year, during the lockdown, he planted four churches among the refugees from Sudan in Egypt. Can you believe it? Yeah. That raised the number of new churches that the Lord blessed us to plant in Egypt and Sudan to be 23 house churches with total number of 330 people. They're all coming from a Muslim background people. BlackRock, thank you very much because you made that to be happening in the Middle East. So we very appreciate your prayer, financial giving all over the years. Thank you and God bless you. Yeah. Part of what we're doing also, we train nationals on mission, church planting, to take the gospel and go. We spend about 10 months with these people in our training program. At the end of the 10 months, we encourage people to go and do practical application in a mission trip. It could be one week, one month, as long as it takes, but they want to do application for what they've learned. And this is what happened with Mona. Mona is an Egyptian young girl, very, very sweet. After she finished the training, she said, I want to go and share the gospel with the refugees in Turkey. Well, she arrived to Turkey, and the refugees came, and she found the first tent, she knocked on the door, the lady inside said, hey, who are you and what's your name? Where do you come from? She said, my name is Mona, I am from Egypt. What's your name? No, oh, my name is Khadija, I'm coming from Syria. Well, Mona invited herself and said, can I come in and chat with you? She said, sure. And this is my daughter, she came with me from Syria. Then she's supposed to open the Bible and share. Well, she forgot everything she learned in the last 10 months. What she tells you, it doesn't matter how much you spend with these people and teach them. At a certain point, they forgot everything. But she spent in the tent, scratching her hair, saying, Lord, what do you want me to say to this lady? I, I don't know what to say. Then, 
just to cut the silence in the tent, she said, Khadija, do you know there is someone called Jesus? He loves you so much. And because he loves you, he can carry you over his shoulder and run to bring you to the rest of the fall, the flock. He loves you. Khadija looked at Mona and she said, Mona, you are telling me my story. This is exactly what happened with me. What is your story, Khadija? She said, I grew up in Syria. I lost my husband in the war there. He was killed. And then it became extremely difficult for me to live with my daughter alone as two women in Syria. So we start to think about what can we do? We need a safer place for us to live. So we thought about going to Turkey. But we don't know how to go to Turkey. They don't accept any people from Syria at this moment. So we found someone in the community in Syria who, if we pay him money, he's going to try to smuggle us from Syria to Turkey, and he will bring us here. We found this guy, and he asked for 8,000 euros for me and my daughter. That's his fee to take us to Turkey. We didn't have the money. We poured money from all over our network of people, and finally, we were able to give him what he asked for. And he said, we're going to meet on that day, 4 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to start to move and go to Turkey. Well, she appeared at 4 o'clock in the morning. She found there's about 60 other people in the same situation like her, they want to escape to Turkey. Well, they start to march. At a certain point, that leader said, now, everybody has to run as fast as you can. There are helicopters up in the sky, and they are shooting people to prevent them from going to Turkey. So in order to do this trip, you have to run as fast as you can. Well, everybody start to run. Khadija, she's an older lady. She's heavy, and she's walking with a cane. She couldn't run as fast as she can. Well, the leader got really frustrated with Khadija, screamed at her and said, Khadija, run, run, run. She said, son, I can't. I'm doing my best. He said, give me your cane. She handed over the cane. He broke the cane into two pieces. He threw the cane as far as possible. And he said, Khadija, you're going to remain here alone. I cannot risk the lives of 60 people because of you. Goodbye. Left Khadija and her daughter alone. She started to cry. And then, Suddenly, out of nowhere, someone came. He's a handsome man, well-built. He said, Khadija, I'm going to take you to Turkey. He put her over his shoulder. He got the hand of her daughter and started to run. He's, she said to him, who are you and who brought you to here? He said, my name is Isa, which it means Jesus in Islam. I will take you to Turkey, and there is someone in Turkey who will tell you more about me. He went, he took Khadija and her daughter, arrived to the other side of the border, and he disappeared. Later on, the rest of the 60 people came, and they found Khadija and her daughter ahead of them. How did you come here, Khadija? They said, Isa brought me here. They didn't understand a word of what she said. They went to the refugees camp in Turkey. And then Khadija told Mona, you must be the person you're going to tell us about Jesus.
Mona opened the Bible, explained the message of salvation to Khadija and her daughter, asked them, do you want to follow that Jesus? They said, yes. Both of them on that day gave their lives to the Lord. We praise the Lord for the miracles that is happening over the Middle East. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, nobody can make the mouth of Mona in the beginning at the ten mute, forget everything in the training, and to say one sentence, Jesus loves you, put you on his shoulder and run to bring you to the rest of the flock, except the Lord himself. A group of people in the West, they get together and they start to pray. Lord, we are praying for big thing that you can do in the Middle East among the Shia Muslim leaders. Can you do something amazing? Can you do something really, really unbelievable? And they start to pray, pray, pray. Well, a couple of months later, one member of this prayer group said to the rest of the people, I feel that God is calling me to go to the Middle East and plant a church among the Shia Muslim. Well, they got really excited about that. They started to pray for him and his family, and they sent him off to the Middle East. Arrived to the big city, found a house, rented out that house, and he was very happy. Three weeks later, it was a knock on the door. Open the door. Two are people, they're totally covered. They have a gun, and they said, are you the pastor coming from the West to tell us about Jesus, and you want us to leave Islam? We don't want you. They shot him in the head right on the spot. He was killed in front of the eyes of his wife and children. It was a dramatic moment for the whole family. The wife took the kids and went back home. People in the West start to pray and pray and pray, Lord, we expect you to do something unbelievable among the Muslim Shia in the Middle East. A few months later, another person from the prayer group said, I feel that the Lord is calling me to plant a church among the Shia people in that big city in the Middle East. They start to pray for him. They send him off to the Middle East. I don't know why he decided to rent out the same house in the big city like the other pastor. Stayed there. A couple of weeks later, it was another knock on the door. He opened the door. He found two totally covered people with arms in their hands. They said to the second guy, are you coming from the West to convert us from Islam to Christianity? They put a cover over his head. They tied his hands. At that moment, he knew what is going to happen to him. He didn't get a chance to say goodbye to his wife or the children. They took him, put him in a truck. The truck started to drive for four hours. Suddenly, stopped, opened the door, and he went into the building. He climbed some steps up. Another door opened up, and they dragged him to put him in a seat. They untied his hands, uncovered his head, and they said, do you know the pastor that was living in the same house before you? 
He said, yes, I know him. That man said, I'm the one who killed him. After I killed him, me and my family start to dream every night. And the 900 people in this room, they dream the same dream. The dream is their hands became dirty with the blood of that first pastor. And it is really bothering us, and we don't know how to wash our hands of the blood of this man, and we cannot sleep at night. So can you tell us what can we do to wash our hands and receive the forgiveness of God? He said, I can't tell you that. Do you have a Bible here? He opened the Bible. They gave him three Bibles, one in French, one in English, and one in Arabic. He picked the Bible, and he started to open, and he shared with them the message of the cross. And he said, the only way to wash your hands is to believe of what Christ did on the cross, to repent and ask the forgiveness of God. And this is the only way you can receive his forgiveness. Then you will be able to sleep at night. Would you like to do that now? The 900 people of the Muslim Shia leaders kneel down on their faces crying to the Lord, they received him as a savior. Brothers and sisters, our God is an amazing God. Our God is an awesome God. He can do miracles. And I just want to share with you, when you pray, pray for big things that express your faith in our awesome God. Big prayers will bring big impact. And let's put our hands in God's hand and let him to use us. And each one of us can do his role or her role and part of that global story. So at the end, we can reach out to that beautiful end, to see people from every nation, from every tribe, from every people group, and from every language coming together and worshiping the Lamb. Let's pray. مواقف عاجزين عن إمكانياتنا وقد إنك أنت عظيم لكن نشكرك لأنك قادر أنك تستخدم إمكانياتنا البسيطة لمجد اسمك في تتميم المهمة والمأمورية العظمى إننا نذهب إلى جميع الأمم ونكرز بالإنجيل أرى بس وحساعدنا من فضلك إن إحنا نكون بنستخدم بإيديك بطريقة مجيدة وعظيمة بقوة غير عادية لكي ما نأتي بالكثيرين إليك Thank you for watching Black Rock Church's Sunday service. We're so glad you found us, and we hope this message made you feel more connected to God. In talking about connection, we find that it's super important for people to be connected to others and to community in order to grow in their faith. So if you're in the area, we invite you to join us to worship in a service. You can find out about our times and locations right here on this webpage. We'd also love to help you connect in a group and find people who can walk alongside you as you continue deepening your understanding and faith. And after you get to know us, you might even like to use your gifts to serve on a team. We believe God gave each of us unique gifts that we can use to serve those around us, one body with many different parts. If you're not able to be here in person, don't worry. We have a great online community and many ways for you to join in virtually and talk to us throughout the week. You can also stay in touch on our website, YouTube channel, Facebook, and Instagram. By visiting our website, you can also easily give your offering one time as an online gift or a reoccurring gift. Just click Give at the top. 
The Bible tells us that tithing is an important part of our relationship with Jesus, and we want to continue to trust God with our lives and our finances. Well, we are so glad you made the choice to get to know us and view one of our services. We hope that you join us next week. Thanks so much for watching.